Income tax 2022-2023 unemployment compensation tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run example problems with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, same as usual, single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents. We've got the 100,000 W-2 income, the standard deduction at the 12,950 getting us to the 87,050. If I pull that on over to our tax formula worksheet, 100,000 income, 12,950, 87,050 taxable income. We've got the tax calculated by the software page two at the 14,774. The 15,000 of the withholdings that we're gonna say gets us to the 22,226. Uh, so there it is here, 226. We're majorly focused on the first half. First half hour we separate, then. The income side, the income statement or taxable income calculated on page one. And we're now considering the unemployment compensation. So usually if there's unemployment compensation, you'll get the form for it. And it's a pretty straightforward type of thing because you'll have a 1099G typically and that usually indicates that we have income. The most complicated thing oftentimes from a tax preparation standpoint for the unemployment compensation is discussing it with the client because they're often gonna say, hey, I thought I thought that, uh, that they didn't include unemployment compensation. And it's like, well, yeah, that's because last year they did funny stuff, with the whole COVID thing, and they tried to remove the unemployment compensation, but it was only a temporary thing, like a lot of the temporary stuff, and now it's back. So now they're including it again. They might say, well, why does that make sense? Because the government is giving me money, and then the government wants the money back. You'll have your money back in 30 days. And it's like, well, yeah, that's because the state government is giving the money for the unemployment compensation or the local government. But on the federal side of things, they see that as, in essence, you know, compensation. Compensation for last night's unfortunates. And whatnot for the income tax purposes or whatever. And that's just kind of like the rule. Well, what about the fact that I didn't, in, I didn't have any withholdings on the unemployment compensation? And it's like, well, that might work out good. That might work out bad. Because if you lost your job in the middle of the year, your withholdings up until that point were probably over withheld which means that might be enough to cover your unemployment compensation. However, if you got a significant amount of unemployment compensation and very little withholdings, then yes, that could result in a bad tax consequence. Okay, that said, if I just jump to the 1099G and we just say this is gonna be the state uh, unemployment, unemployment, I probably spelled it wrong, whatever. Don't let it drive you crazy or anything. This is gonna be then right here unemployment compensation so let's say we got ten thousand there boom and then if i go back on over that's going to pull on over into our form so we're on the schedule one and there's the ten thousand line number seven that then is going to be totaling up down below at the ten thousand pulling back into the form 1040 1040 still have the w2 income at the one hundred thousand and then I'm saying that there's unemployment compensation. Now, it, you would think that maybe the income wouldn't be quite so high if they had unemployment compensation from the W-2 income, but just an example problem here. So that brings us up to 110,000, and then we've got the standard deduction and so on. If you want to put that into our form over here, we can say that's going to be a Schedule 1 income item. And so I've got alimony, alimony. here. So I'm going to add some lines and say, I'm just going to say unemployment. 
unemployment and let's make it uh let's make it black and white i'll leave a couple spaces in case i don't know what maybe we got a couple of them for spouses or whatever so this will just be just the first one unemployment unemployment and i said it was ten thousand. so this will be total unemployment let's check the spelling of this thing did you spell it right i did of course i did spelling master if i went back to like grade school i could probably skip in like the 50 percent percentile of the first graders so i'm going to say let's delete the let's pull this in i'm going to sum this up boom let's bring it on over to page the formula 110 and there's uh the 12950 get this to the 9750 9750 page two uh, 17134 so let's put that here 17134 and the calculation of the 15,000 withholdings gets us to the 2134 but they probably calculated some penalties of $17 put the penalties for 17 2151 2151 so the general idea of course is in most cases the unemployment is going to be uh, includable in income now remember if there was a situation where the unemployment was wrong for whatever reason and there was a lot of fraud cases uh that it seemed that the irs was was checking on before meaning you got a 1099g but you didn't actually get the ten thousand dollars in this case you want to go to the issuer of the 1099 and try to get them to give the irs a corrected 1099 otherwise you're going to have a problem if you had to repay some of the ten thousand dollars because they overpaid you then you're going to say okay they gave me a 1099 for the 10,000 but i paid back like 1,000 let's say so then if i go back on over we've got the difference of 9,000 and it's noting here the 1,000 that was paid that's important because the irs of course is going to have a 1099 that says ten thousand dollars on it so you want to be able to tell them yes there was ten thousand dollars maybe on it but I repaid part of it, the refund part of it, and therefore it's down to 9,000 so that then they can still tie in the 1099 to your tax form. If you just put 9,000 net without this information, then th you would expect the government would probably come back at you and, and, uh, and say that, that, uh, that you didn't include the proper amount on the form 1099. So that kind of detail is important. Now, if you had income from a prior year that basically you had to refund then you might need to look at some instructions uh with regards to should you amend the prior year or something like that but if the prior year if like in the prior year like 2021 they didn't include unemployment compensation in income then you may not have you know <laughs> you might not have an issue uh in that in that uh, instance because because it wouldn't have been included in income anyways but in any case that's the general idea it's usually included in income be careful with the withholding situation if you're if you're in a tax preparation situation and people are calling you and saying hey look i'm getting uh, unemployment because i'm i'm gonna uh, be laid off or whatever then the question is should you have withholdings or not and you might need to do a projection to figure that out accurate accurately uh and and so that's something just uh, to keep in mind uh, as well going forward obviously when you actually do the tax preparation it is what it is by that time you're gonna have to do what's been dictated generally by the 1099 which is generally to include it in income